Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Are you all tired after praising? No. <laughs> okay. So are you all cheerful? Yes. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Can I say hallelujah? Hallelujah. 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 So I know that you are very cheerful now. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Ha hallelujah. 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 The word of God is taken from the book of Matthew chapter 8 verses 23 to 27. Then Jesus got into the boat and his disciples followed him. Suddenly a furious storm came up on the lake so that the waves swept over the boat. But Jesus was sleeping. The disciples went and woke him saying, Lord, save us. We are going to drown, he replied. You of little faith, why are you so afraid? Then he got up and rebuked the wind and the waves, and it was completely calm. The men were amazed and asked, what kind of a man is this? Even the winds and the waves obey him. Praise the Lord. Praise Hallelujah. Lord. Hallelujah. 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 Jesus was on the boat with the disciples. And there was a furious storm. And uh, they were about to drown. So Jesus was fast asleep in the boat on a pillow. Can anybody can sleep in such a storm? Only Jesus can sleep, right? <laughs> because he had no tension only. Praise the Lord. <laughs> So, my brothers and sisters, Jesus was fast asleep. And these people are about to drown. They were watching. Oh, Jesus is sleeping. Wake up, master. Don't you care that we are about to drown? And within a second, Jesus got up. And he said, you of little faith. You know, you of little faith and he rebuked the wind and the storm and it completely stopped praise the lord praise the hallelujah. 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 hallelujah hallelujah my brothers and sisters today god is expecting faith from us you know when the storms hit our boat we also must be failing in a boat today right my brothers and sisters and there must be a furious storm Maybe the storm of your losing the job. Storm of a financial crisis in your life. Maybe your business which you are doing has crashed. And uh, today you are going through a mighty financial problem. You don't know how to manage with your finances now. Your children fees. Your family is here. You have to manage the rent and so many bills which are coming each day of the month. You don't have any extra income is coming forth. So, there are maybe you are afflicted with some, you know, disease. You are sick today. And you are worried about it. There are so many things must have. The storms may be hitting your boat today. My brothers and sisters. But there is one hope for all of us. Praise the Lord. Whatever your storm may be. But there is one hope for all of us. Praise the Lord. Praise what is that hope? Jesus. Can we say it loudly? Jesus. Can we say again loudly? Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. He is there. I want to prove it to you with a beautiful testimony now. It happened to one of our prayer gathering members. Her name is Margaret. Her sister Celine. One day in India, in Bombay, in Maharashtra. Started getting fever. They gave all the medications and all this. Uh, some of the, our, we usually take Panadol, these things, syrup, this thing, everything. They gave. Nothing is happening. Just going down little. Again is coming up. Three days, four days. Then Selin's husband from India called her Margaret, sister-in-law here. She said, Selin's fever is not going down. Just going down, coming up. Going. We don't know what to do. She said, why don't you take her to the doctor? 
and uh, they can do a blood test. You know, maybe they can detect what's the problem with her. And uh, he took her to the doctor. And what happened when uh, doctors had come to ch check Celine, she was complaining of a wrist, uh, this uh, ribs area, a terrible pain. She said, the doctor, don't touch me, don't touch me. It's too much pain, I cannot tolerate this pain. Maybe because of that pain, maybe I'm getting the fever, she was telling the doctor. The doctor suggested, we'll do the blood test. And they did the blood test and he said, we'll take an x-ray again. My brother, sister, when they took the x-ray, the x-ray was showing like this. Can we have the single x-ray? This is the one. Can you see that? The x-ray of the ribs. This was like this. Then the doctor got worried. He said, we have to do further tests. We have to check why this is so. Why this is so dark here. Let's go in for more tests. They went in more tests. They went the bi biopsy. And the doctors uh, suspected cancer. And she had cancer. You can see that cancer has spread. My brothers and sisters. And Celine was not informed of this. But family discussed. Celine had four sisters. You know. And all of them they discussed it. What to do the further test. How to be done. We'll show that later. Yeah, this is the way. You can also see the x-rays. You know, all showing, right? You see my brothers and sisters. This is the state of our family. And they did not tell her. Because maybe if the fear or something cancer, she may, something may happen to her. All were worried. You know, this entire family started praying. And they discussed how to go about the finances. It's not easy. She has to go to chemotherapy. Then the operation. Doctor said we have to operate on her. Then the chemotherapy decisions have to be go through. So many things are there associated with cancer. And they had financial problems. It's not easy. You know, so all the three or four sisters of her all decided to pull together and uh, discuss with the doctor and uh, finally fixed a date for the operation. But they decided to, before the operation, they decided to pray. Because this family is a very prayerful family. They trusted in the Lord. They started praying and interceding. Day and night they started praying. And Margaret also is one of the intercessors. And she started praying at 3 o'clock in the morning and night. She used to get up in her crying to God. Jesus, not only heal my sister, but all the cancer patients in the world. She's asking the Lord to pray. And I intercede. She was interceding for the cancer patients in the world. Along with the one touch of your, let it be upon my sister. They're crying out. The whole family crying out to God. And then that Selin's one son, you are not going to the church. Young boy. You know, he had just joined the job also. And uh, he was very worried because he came to know. But his mother did not know that she had cancer. But son knew. She had cancer. He was started crying and, and now he started telling Jesus, I am ready to go to the church. Only bring the healing to my mother. I want the healing. And uh, my brothers and sisters, they went on praying till the day of the, uh, the operation. But the previous day, they called for preachers who are into mighty prayers. They also prayed over her. They spent the entire day literally praying over her. Selene was getting worried, what's happening? Why so many people? And all the family also gathered together before the day of the operation. They all came. But they did not tell. There is some damage of your ribs. That's why there is an operation is required, a small one. So do not worry. Everything is going to all. But they all came to see all. They were consoling her in this way. But did not reveal to her she had cancer. My brothers and sisters. And... They did all the prayers and the, they are taken to the doctor on the day of the operation. But before the operation, the husband of Selin said to the doctor, Doctor, I have a request. We have prayed a lot for doctors. You know, this was a Hindu doctor, not a Christian doctor. And uh, we want you to do one test for us. You know, to check up whether still cancer is there. Doctor was shocked. Why again? Such a big x-ray is there. You saw those x-ray. All these reports are there. Again asking to. You see, my brothers and sisters, 
but the insistence of the husband the doctor went in for the scanning and the x-ray and what a miracle there was no cancer trace in the whole body hallelujah <laughs> hallelujah there was no cancer trace can we show my brother this is the sister of margaret where is margaret can you stand up and testify for the glory of god and her own sister yes my brothers and sisters it just happened in the month of july you know this is a very powerful testimony doctor was so shocked he couldn't believe it how did it happen he's a hindu doctor he doesn't believe in jesus you know doctor said then finally doctor had to accept it because they did two three times test every time the results are negative and the doctor said oh it's really a miracle it's really a miracle he accepted and you are my medicine no you are you are god who is giving the medicine is more greater hallelujah <laughs> hallelujah <laughs> my brothers and sisters that is what i'm telling you you need to have that faith which this family had in jesus praise the lord <laughs> hallelujah <laughs> you know this family had the great faith in god day and night now today what a beautiful way after everything is over and she the reports were clear and selin was told you were healed of cancer what a shock to her <laughs> praise the lord and now both husband and wife are going to the village close by and uh, testifying for the lord and selin her sister is preaching to the villagers now the word of god hallelujah <laughs> hallelujah <laughs> my brother and sister what a wonderful way this family has been blessed today sis They, this family is praying breakfast lunch dinner all prayers only hallelujah and the son who was not going to the church a regular member in the church today hallelujah all changes came with one sickness praise the lord hallelujah my brothers and sisters that's why i'm telling you when you call out the name of jesus mighty things happen hallelujah miracles happen healings happen deliverances happen and the darkness will run away and the light will come into your homes hallelujah <laughs> praise the lord <laughs> philippians chapter 4 verse 6 to 7 do not be anxious about anything but in every situation by prayer and petition with thanksgiving present your request to god and the peace of god which transcends all understanding will guard your hearts and your minds in christ jesus my brothers and sisters do not be anxious about anything you know we are anxious about so many things in our life right my brothers and sisters as i told you our finances our children fees and uh, uh, all kinds of dishes in the body or family members and relationships and so many things we are worried we are anxious isn't it you know maybe we are any, worried about the future what's going to happen some people say i lost a job maybe i am going to lose my job or something may happen all this kind of thoughts and worries may be bogging us down you see my brothers and sisters the word of god is telling us do not be anxious about anything but in every circumstance with thanksgiving in your heart offer before god and the peace of god which is beyond your understanding will guard and guide your hearts and minds in christ jesus hallelujah this is very important my brothers and sisters you know so i want to give you a beautiful testimony about one of our members juliana and tony their son langston minages it's not happened here it happened in united states they are our members you know bit langston about 4 years back he was studying here he is finished 12th and he went to rochester university in united states and he took the cyber security you know as his engineering subject and he was about to finish his graduation in the month of uh, summer may and june and here he started he was in h1b visa you understand that's usually is given for the all these uh, Uh, indians and all expatriates who are going to the america on a job purpose and working there 
you know, many of them are there studying and all this. Yeah. So, my brothers and sisters, what happened was, his term was getting over. He got the graduation somewhere in the month of uh, May or June. His family had gone there. But before that, in January onwards, he started applying for jobs. Because OPT, that is uh, optical training, you know, this, they have got a visa they get. You know, if you don't get within that period, you cannot apply for a job. He had to come back to UAE. You see, my brothers and sisters, now they were in tremendous tension. What to do? And that is the time Juliana had gone for his son's education along with her husband, Tony, to USA. And here, Langston was applying for so many jobs. Everywhere he was rejected. He was not getting any jobs. He was getting under tension. Because time was running out to come back. Now visa is getting over. He cannot stay in the United States. You know, all these problems he was going through. And that's the time for graduation ceremony. The family, mother and father had gone. And that is the time Juliana noticed Langston is not praying well. He was a very prayerful boy when he was here. And uh, mother used to guide him. They used to say nine chaplets and rosary and uh, mass every day. All these things was going on. Now, he had uh, fallen in friendship. Their friends were there. And uh, going out and so the prayer was became less. And no reading of the Bible, nothing. Mother noticed all this. And she said, son, do you know why you're struggling here in this country? We are not getting a job, not, not getting a call. It's because you're not praying. You know, you're gone away from the Lord. Now you better come back. And then God will do a miracle in your life. And she said, now onwards, nine chapters of divine mercy, rosary, compulsory, every single day we'll pray. And going to the mass every single day. My brothers and sisters, it became a routine. They started going every single day mass and this thing praying. And then all this is finished and uh, the Juliana came here back and with Tony. Because they couldn't stay for long. And what happened? And suddenly, uh, he, Tony, he was getting very depressed, Langston, because many of your friends got the jobs. And uh, he thought maybe I am not qualified enough or smart enough to get a job here in this country. All the thoughts were coming to him. Because everywhere he was rejected. You know, this was the situation. He was going, going to so many interviews. And, but, you know, the first call came, came to him in the month of August. Somewhere on the 12th of August. And uh, that's the time casual call came to him. And uh, they said, you have an interview. That's the day father and mother... Both came for intercessory here on Monday. And after the intercessory, they asked me, please pray for our son. Today is the first interview in a company called NISO. Very big company. You know, very good company in America. And the first interview he passed. Next Monday, they called him for the second interview. Again, they came for intercessory and asked me to pray. I also lifted a special prayer for Langston. And he passed the second interview. And next week, again, it was on Monday. That consecutive weeks. And they came for the intercessory. And again, as usual, they asked me to pray for our son. For the, again, I prayed, asking God to intervene. And my brothers and sisters. Next week, on the fourth week, they called him. He thought, maybe they're calling me to, as usual, to tell me, you are rejected. But this time, he had a surprise. They said, Langston, come and collect your offer letter. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And this young man was so overjoyed and one of the best companies he got. Not only that, he says all these interviews he went, God was training him to do the best in this particular company. Hallelujah. See how God uses all negative circumstances to make it positive for you. You see my brothers and sisters, this is what, you know, when you trust in God, you know, and Dedicate yourself and pray and God will turn your, you know, the Lord says in the book of Psalm 30, 11, David said, I will turn your mourning into dancing. I will take away the clothes of sadness from you and clothe you with the garments of gladness. Hallelujah. You see, that's what happened. 
Today, Langston is very happy. Can we show the photograph? He's standing with the father and the Divine Mercy picture in his hand. This is Langston. You know, he's standing with the American father there. And he's doing a, this boy is doing a wonderful work spreading the Divine Mercy in America. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So he's taking his father and mother also. Wonderful. They're taking the pictures of Divine Mercy spreading in American churches, my brothers and sisters. See, God's mercy is there. You know, that's why I'm trying to tell you. So, God can do wonderful things in your life, provided that you trust in Him and do not be anxious about anything. Hallelujah. 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 Luke chapter 18, verse 35 to 43. As Jesus approached Jericho, a blind man was sitting by the roadside begging. When he heard the crowd going by, he asked what was happening. They told him, Jesus of Nazareth is passing by. He called out, Jesus, son of David, have mercy on me. Those who led the way rebuked him and told him to be quiet. But he shouted all the more, son of David, have mercy on me. Jesus stopped and ordered the man to be brought to him. When he came near, Jesus asked him, what do you want me to do for you? Lord, I want to see, he replied. Jesus said to him, receive your sight. Your faith has healed you. Hallelujah. My brother, your faith has healed you. My brothers and sisters, you were a blind man, a blind beggar. He had no faith, um, no hope for the future. Where were the blind people's the surgeries? Where they were born blind man and there was no hope for him. But one hope came when he heard about Jesus healing the blind, healing the lepers, healing the lame, healing the dumb, raising the people from the dead. This man heard. He heard. And now he was very excited. He wanted to meet Jesus because this is the only one chance for him to get healed and see the world. And now he came to know Jesus is passing by that way in Jericho. He was very excited. He couldn't really see him with his eyes because eyes are blind. But he can hear the commotion, the sound, the people screaming, shouting. He wanted to draw the attention of Jesus. How is he going to do that? There's only one way. And he resorted to that. He said, Jesus, son of David, have mercy on me. He started shouting. And uh, people said, keep quiet. Don't shout. Don't shout. Keep quiet. You're making too much sound here. Did he give up? Did he say, it's okay? I don't want to make sound? No. What did he do? He shouted more louder. He said, Jesus, son of David, have mercy on me. She lauded, increased the volume and voice. And Jesus heard it. Jesus said, bring him to me. And the moment the disciples came and told, see, Jesus is calling you. He was so excited. He ran like a bullet. You see, and right in front of Jesus. And Jesus said, let it be. I, what do you want me to do for you? Jesus asked a question. He said, there's only one desire he had in his life to see. He said, Lord, I want to see. I want to see. He said, then Jesus replied, receive your sight. What has healed you? You are? Faith has healed you. Your faith has healed you. You see, if he had not faith, he wouldn't have been so excited to run to Jesus. He had all the faith in this world that Jesus can heal him. My brothers and sisters, that's what is required for all of us here. Romans 10, 17 says, faith comes by, how does it faith comes? By hearing the Word, by reading the word, by meditating up the word. If you're really not touching the Bible, do you think 
If somebody has got cancer or anything, they're sick, and now suddenly you are not praying, and I go and tell him, brother, you will be completely healed by Jesus. Have faith, have faith. What faith he can get? He never touched the Bible in his lifetime. Can he get the faith like that? When I tell him like that? No. Faith is a gift of God. It comes gradually. You know, it comes gradually. You know, even though once upon a time I was not touching the Bible, I had no faith in God. You know, but as I was praying and spending time with God, read such powerful testimonies of the healings and the blessings of the people, you know, step by step, step by step, step by step, my face started coming up, up, up. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. You see, my brothers and sisters, you need that faith. You know, you remember, we are the family fed here. You see? And uh, the situation in the market was bad, isn't it? Yeah? We all know about it. And uh, people thought maybe, why we are putting up such a big stall with such a big quantity? It was much more than last year. You see? And but we trusted in God. We prayed. We asked the Lord. We had 100% faith that God will do some miracle. You know, but our intention was good. Motive was good because we wanted the church to be helped for the renovation work. So my brother said, with that trust and faith in God, we did the maximum quantity possible. And my brothers and sisters, remember, people say this is a recession period. But we got nearly 80,000 dirhams more than last year. It's a big, big increase. Hallelujah. <laughs> Hallelujah. <laughs> Tremendously believed in this, Lord. 80,000 dirhams increased than last year. It's not a joke, isn't it? You know, complete faith in Jesus. You know, that's what is required, my brothers and sisters. You need to have that faith. You know, without faith, it's impossible to please God. The word of God says in the book of Hebrews. Praise the Lord. Yes. Hallelujah. 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 See, there's a powerful testimony in a small way. Scotty wants to give it today. Scotty is sitting right here. And Scotty, you can come up. Yeah. And you can share this testimony. Yeah. Brother, this is unbelievable. But this um, scripture today segues exactly what my testimony Hallelujah. is. Hallelujah. Can you have to tell me? Brothers and sisters, you know me from, what, 2011. Yeah. And in 2015, I was coming to the choir practice, and I forgot my reading glasses. And we were starting to practice the song, and I could not see the words on the hymn, the hymn uh, paper, you know? So I couldn't see the words. So we had to uh, kind of uh, play along until Choir. <laughs> we come up to the big stage and then I could see it on the screen, the big screen. And when I saw it on the big screen, everything went away and we got it, we got it uh, going. But uh, during the, the, uh, the healing session, I prayed and I said, Lord, Please restore my sight. I keep forgetting my glasses. <laughs> Brothers and sisters, I'm going to read a passage in a little while. I, don't, I haven't used my reading glasses since 2015. Hallelujah. The brother said, uh, you have to have faith. And when I started getting my, I could read now without glasses because the Lord said, okay, I restored your sight. Now, read the word. Read it out loud so that you can hear the word, so you can build your faith. Build my faith. What is that about? Well, Jesus told us, in Matthew chapter 12, verses 43 to 45, he gave us a big warning. He said, when that unclean spirit comes out of you, you are healed. But if you don't fill that empty space, that evil, unclean spirit will come back 
not only by itself, it will grab seven others. So ladies and gentlemen, I took that to heart. You know, brother, I started to heal myself because of the word of the Lord, because I started to have faith like a child. I read it. It says, it says in many places, you can heal yourself. And so many people have. But, brother, I was uh, walking down uh, my house, uh, coming back from playing golf. And all of a sudden, I got an attack, a sciatica attack. Anybody knows what sciatica is? Yes. You know that nerve that comes down here? No, sir. Here? Yeah. That, that is one of the most painful attacks. And I knew this unclean spirit. I knew him from 20 years. And that, I will give a testimony another time. But anyway, I said to myself, okay, I believe in Jesus. I can do the work Jesus does, and I can do greater than these. Jesus will do whatever I ask in his name. John chapter 14, verses 12 to 13. And I did it, and it wasn't working. It wasn't coming out. And I had already healed my knee, healed some other things, when you get to my age, you start uh, getting a lot of things to heal. So this one wasn't working, and I, and I prayed. And one day I, I asked Jesus, I said, Jesus, what's going on? Why can't this unclean spirit come out of me? And the Holy Spirit said to me, go to the Divine Mercy Healing Session. Hallelujah. <laughs> I swear to God. I said, uh, wow. Well, the healing session was only three to four days away, and I said, I'm going. I'm going. So when the healing session started, we, we, you know, just like tonight, after the uh, chaplet, we started to praise and worship. Right then and there, when I was praising and worship in tongues, the pain left me. A feeling, a sensation came down, warm. And now I was looking for that pain. That pain was gone. Hallelujah. Ladies and gentlemen, there's another supernatural thing that takes place in this building on these gatherings. The glory of God comes. The glory of God is even power, powerful as the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. You just have to ask for it and take it. It's there for the taking. Thank you, brother. Thank you. God bless you, Scotty, for sharing. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. God has marvelous healings here in the healing sessions. Not only healing sessions, other sessions you are coming, mighty healings God has done. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. John chapter 10, verses 10 to 11 and 27 to 30. The thief comes only to steal, kill and destroy. I have come that they may have life and have it to the full. I am the good shepherd. The good shepherd lays down his life for the sheep. My sheep listen to my voice. I know them. And they follow me. I give them eternal life. And they shall never perish. No one will snatch them out of my hand. My father who has given them to me. Is greater than all. No one can snatch them out of my father's hand. Hallelujah. You know the sheep. There's a speciality of sheep is there. Do you know what is the? What is the speciality of the sheep? Not become bakra, I'm talking. <laughs> Not eat ka bakra. <laughs> okay. <laughs> no. The sheep, the speciality is follows the master's voice, the shepherd's voice. You want to see this video? Can we have the video, please? Now you, now you, now you, now you. 
Komm nur, komm nur, komm nur, komm nur. Komm her, 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 This heard the sound of the shepherd and came running. Praise the Lord. <laughs> Hallelujah. I'll give a small testimony which happened when Canadian person had come to Yemen. You know, and he saw there were nearly 100 sheep were there and three shepherds had allowed the sheep to drink water from a well that area. You know, they're given the water. All got mixed up. And this Canadian preach, uh, this uh, person is thinking, how these, uh, these people, these shepherds are going to separate the sheep? They're all mixed up, you know. And uh, later on, asked the water, they drank all the sheep, 100 sheep. And one shepherd made one particular sound like this person. And all his sheep, one third of the sheep, just followed him. The second one came and he made another sound. All his sheep, they followed him. And the balance is of the third one. You know, the balance was there. And this Canadian person, he wanted to see whether if he imitates the shepherd, whether they listen to him or not. You know, whether they follow. He studied the voice and the sound, everything. And started making the same sound like him. First, the sheep did not care for him only. Okay? They did not even look up. They went on grazing. After the second time, he made the sound. Again, they went on grazing. They did not look at him also. The third time he made the sound, they looked up as though he's become mad. <laughs> so my brothers and sisters, see, the sheep is so particular about the voice of the shepherd. You know, Jesus said, my sheep listen to my voice and they follow me. This is what is required of all of us, my brothers and sisters. You know, Jesus wants to speak to us. But how many of us today, the world is full of distractions everywhere. You know, do you know what is the biggest distraction to hear the voice of God today? Anybody can tell me? What is the biggest distraction? <laughs> Everyone said mobile. Is it true? Yes, I want to show you one video, small one. Okay, watch it. You see how this distracts? You know, shall we watch one mobile video? <laughs> But you see, my brothers and sisters, I will tell you another thing happened about six months or back in Saudi Arabia. You know, one lady and man, they came to the airport with a small baby. And uh, they were, both of them were on the mobile. And they forgot the baby in the lounge. Baby is sitting and eating something and they forgot. Both, they were on the mobile going, going. They went on the flight. 
after they went on the flight and the flight took off and after it went for little distance suddenly the lady remembered where is my baby oh my god you know she ran to the pilot and means that uh, these people you know their hostess and all she made a big commotion on the flight and she said please bring the flight back take the flight back i want my baby why want my baby and the pilot poor fellow he called the control towers down then can i come back because she shouting at here making a big noise the uh, baby has to be brought back then the 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 control tower looked at all the this thing and checked of the flights and this thing and finally gave the go ahead and the whole flight came back only because that lady was on the mobile <laughs> and picked up the baby just imagine the cost the distance that the time they wasted and passengers wasted that time so many happened just because one lady was on the phone mobile you see my brother and sister that's what i'm telling you many of us when we are praying also we keep our mobile aside isn't it every 10 to 5 second 2 seconds it's a tang 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 is the whatsapp the sounds are coming you know then we are attracted to what's happening what's the maybe message what's the this thing and when we forget now we are speaking to jesus right you see my brothers and sisters and now the people they are seeking instead of seeking the face of god they are seeking the facebook now <laughs> you understand you see this is what's happening my brothers and sisters too many distraction instagram the twitter snapchat oh you name it you have it you see my brother day by day i read a big article which came recently in the gulf news about instagram you know this instagram is showing all affluent lifestyle and the beautiful houses beautiful men ladies and dresses and this and that oh some people saw here in our dubai and uae sharja you know they were very depressed we are not like them they are so beautiful and so good dresses so beautiful houses so beautiful cars we don't have them and they went into depression you see i'm not joking real fact you know so many said we are going to depression seeing all this because we are not able to afford that you see my brother this is what happens you know but when you read this word my brothers and sisters god says isaiah 43:4 He says you are precious in my sight and honored in my sight and I love you praise the lord hallelujah god doesn't care what you are what you look how you look what you dress how we are listening god is not interested in you in this way god is interested in your heart god is interested in you my brothers and sisters you are precious and honored in his sight you know when they read this word it gives you that jeremiah 31:3 the lord says i have loved you with an everlasting love who can tell that isaiah 54:10 the lord says the mountains may go away the hills may totter but my everlasting love will never leave you my covenant of peace will always be with you hallelujah only cards can speak he's showing he says you are the apple of my eye you see my brother that's why i'm telling you my brother sisters many many voices are there distracting our life today and so many people today another greater distraction is coming up my brother many people overwork spend all the time working 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 to build up the life and make richer money make money make money you see and they forget about a spiritual life they have ambitions to become great in the eyes of the world will that help no you see my brother and sister that's why it's very important they say work is worship work is worship but one thing i tell you work is never worship hallelujah you need to give time to god you need to give time to god my brother and sisters you know that's why in 24 hours jesus said You know in the book of Matthew 26 40:41 the disciples of Jesus were sleeping when Jesus wanted that prayer you know he came back again and again three times why are you sleeping wake up and pray so that you will not put to temptation 
Stay alert and pray. Can't you pray for an hour? He asked. You see, my brothers and sisters, today, if you're not giving time to God, if in the world, we will start going back into the world, my brothers and sisters. You know, the world is so attractive. There's, there's, there's so many things to seduce you. You know, my brothers and sisters, tempt you. But you need to stand firm against all the attack of the evil one through the word of God and prayer. So my brothers and sisters, if you want to listen to the voice of the master, you need to spend that time with God, my brothers and sisters. So that's only you can listen to the voice of the master. You know, when you read the word, God speaks to you. As Brother Scotty said, he started reading the word loud. You see, as you're reading the loud, you're taking the word to your heart. That bring changes into your life. You know, as you're reading, healings are taking place. The Hebrews 4, 12 says, The word is active and alive, sharper than two-edged sword. And it can penetrate joints and marrows. You see, my brothers and sisters, you know, the word is active. It's not a dead word. You see, that's why it's so important, my brothers and sisters, you know, to spend the time in the presence of God. Not saying, busy, busy, busy. What is the meaning of busy? You know, busy is being under the, whose yoke? Satan's yoke. You know, that's why they said busy. You know, we don't give time to God. She said, I'm busy, I'm busy. No, my brothers and sisters, you need to make yourself easy so that you can spend time with this precious God. Hallelujah. 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 That's why 1 Timothy 6, 10 says, listen to this word. For the love of money is a root of all kinds of evil. Some people eager for money have wandered from the faith and pierced themselves with many griefs. You know, money in itself is not bad. You understand? But the love of money is, the love of money is the root of all kinds of evil. You know, some people eager for money have wandered away from the faith and pierced themselves with many sorrows. That's what uh, 1 Timothy chapter 6 verse 10 says, my brothers and sisters. You know, and even so many people are today, alcoholism, drunkenness, taking drugs, and they think this all gives them the pleasure. But one thing I tell you, it will bring many sorrows to them. You see, that's what, you know, that then you will not hear the voice of God. Because when you're indulging all this, you're spending your time, you know, on all this alcoholism and drunkenness and all kinds of uh, drugs and some kind of uh, habits, all this will, you know, you're spending your time on that. You know, my brothers, slowly, slowly, you cannot hear the voice of God. So my brothers and sisters, the more you lead a clean life and spend that beautiful time in the presence of God, you will hear the voice of God. Hallelujah. 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 That's why my brothers and sisters, we need to spend the seed that David says, Psalm 27, 4. Listen to this. Psalm 27, 4. One thing I ask from the Lord. This only do I seek, that I may dwell in the house of the Lord all the days of my life, to gaze on the beauty of the Lord and to seek him in his temple. Hallelujah. Amen. Only one thing I ask, the one thing do I seek, that I may dwell in the house of the Lord, in the presence of the Lord. Again, the next Psalm 84, 10. Let's listen to this. You know, better is one day in your courts than a thousand elsewhere. I would rather be a doorkeeper in the house of my God than dwell in the tents of the wicked. See, one day in your courts is better than a thousand elsewhere. You know, see that David is longing for the presence of God. Because that was giving him joy. That was giving him wisdom. My brother said, let's see the next scripture. Psalm 6, 16, 11. You make known to me the path of life. You will fill me with joy in your presence. With eternal pleasures at your right hand. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. See, you will fill me with joy in your presence. Today so many people are seeking pleasures from the world. My brothers and sisters, things of the world you cannot you cannot, but you can get the joy in your heart. And when God fills you, praise the Lord. 
his presence you can feel the joy with eternal pleasures at your right hand you see david realized that that's why he was spending time in the presence of god today my brothers and sisters you know we need to spend more time with the lord we need to come back to the lord if we have wasted our time in our vain activities do not spend your time all the time on the facebook there's, there's all kinds of social medias are taking much of our time and our prayer life is going down and down and down. You know, unless, whenever you're praying, you know, please keep your mobiles inside the other room or somewhere not close by. You understand? Or switch off your mobile. Do something. Because every two, two minutes you keep on gazing that, my brother, and listening to that, and you will be disturbed. You cannot have a real conversation with the Lord. Neither you can hear his voice. You know, it's very important. So my brothers and sisters, today is the time for us to come back to the Lord. I'm sure God is going to bless each and every one of us today in a powerful way. Shall we give a big hand to the Lord? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Let's all rise up, my brothers and sisters. Subscribe to our YouTube channel, Divine Mercy Sharjah, and hit the bell icon to be the first to receive preaching videos by Brother Alfred. Watch, share and evangelize.